They're absolutely fantastic, beyond wildest dreams. Excursions, visiting the other yeah. country homes, the house itself, the history, the walkthrough with your parents, everything was just everything. an experience everything. that we wouldn't get. We have just come off our inaugural Grand Historic Tour here at Mapperton, and it was five nights and six days with me, of course, and the American Viscountess, and the person behind the camera, Luke. That's me. <laughs> we both were there. We had an absolutely fantastic time with our guests. It was it, really it, the most astonishing it, experience. I mean, I can't stop smiling about it. We had 12 American guests, and this entire house was filled with, for the first time ever, American accents. I mean, that many American accents. You, you, course, Judy, you actually gave a speech one night saying, the wonderful thing about this is I'm surrounded by Americans. I know. I don't I, have to just have my limey husband. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it was such a huge success, everybody, that we wanted to give you a behind the scenes look as to what went on. It's almost as if you're kind of experiencing yourself well by watching it, but in the hopes that you might want to come on our next Grand Historic Tour as well. Right, Luke? Absolutely. We would love to see you here. So the guests entered into here and this was they arrived on a Sunday and from when from their arrival, so they all arrived around four o'clock on a Sunday and they came into the hall. So they came into the hall. So this is where we did our welcome talk and just to basically get acquainted with everybody. We were all in here. It was really cozy. It was wonderful. Then when we uh, look at day one, so now I kind of want to go through the itinerary. And uh, by the way, Polly, one of our relations uh, at Montague, she's a Montague, she made the most spectacular itinerary. So when people arrived to their bedrooms, they had a brilliant, almost like a booklet of itinerary. What? But, but not just that, they had amazing things in their bedrooms. They had a Mapperton dressing gown. They had some Mapperton slippers. They had wonderful warm beds. They did, and, and a goodie bag. They had a Mapperton water <clears throat> bottle. Um, they had uh, Alberta, uh, some postcards, one of them being the Alberta, the American heiress, which I'll get onto that supper in a minute, uh, postcards. So we really did fill, they had the Sandwich Man book. So we really did fill their goodie bag with lots of um, just fun, interesting Mapperton slash Montague slash sandwich. Um, so we're in, we're in the dining room here, and this was the scene for the first welcome dinner, mm -hmm. which we held on the Monday night. And it was black tie. It was black tie. It was a wonderful formal event, but actually it wasn't at all stuffy. No. There was lots of laughter. Can you get stuffy with me? <laughs> we don't lots get... of laughter, and it was, it was absolutely sensational. Uh, just to see everybody dressed up, and putting on, you know, just an amazing frock. And Dan, again, Dan the butler was here uh, to make sure that all of the guests were just, you know, waited on hand and foot. We had Chef Joe then in the kitchen with her team getting ready, and it was a five course meal. And, and, and menus it, printed beautifully. And we've got these wonderful menus um, for the food, and the food included some fantastic Mapperton Venzen. So yeah. this was meat from the estate. It was so delicious. But of course, there were always veggie options. Um, and we had sorbets because we were pairing everything with different wines, which had been very carefully selected. We started off, of course, with, with Mapperton Cuvée. Yes. But um, it was an absolutely sumptuous yeah. feast. And the wonderful thing, Dan is not only a brilliant butler, but he knows his wine. He's so a sommelier. He's a sommelier. So he was able to speak to the guests about what wines he had chosen. This wine is a 45% Merlot, 50% um, Cabernet Sauvignon, and 5% Petit Verdot. Mm -hmm. And it's been chosen tonight because it's gonna give you flavors of licorice, um, mm. blackberry, it's gonna have some mint in there, and um, it's also mm. gonna be a little peppered and have some spice. So it should pair really, really well with both options tonight. So then after dinner, um, people for day one, they would come in here afterwards. Dan again was here serving people after dinner drinks. We lit the fire. It was brilliant. Dan, it's the morning after the grand dinner and um, what do you think? How is everybody? Everybody's in such a great mood. We've just had a lovely breakfast. 
uh, full English, fruit, cereals, croissants, and everyone's really at beats and looking forward to the day. They, yeah. they just seem to have had an absolutely amazing time. I can see these beaming smiles. Thank We've you. got some really happy guests, haven't we? Really, really happy guests. And they're just all having the most wonderful time and they're just enjoying their surroundings and everything that they're doing. Yeah. Plus the food. Plus the food and the wine, which, and you, the wine. which you've been introducing. <laughs> yeah, you, you've done some great pairing. We had some good wines last night. We had a lovely Lira. Uh, Cote de Rhone that was paired with the venison and it went down very well. Fantastic Dan, thank you so much for doing brilliantly. And then kind of just going through the itinerary, day two was full on, so everybody met here. Day two where my in-laws, the Earl and Countess of Sandwich, uh, arrived, met everybody and gave a wonderful house tour and uh, they also got a private tour of the gardens. Uh, which we are well no we're known for. I mean, they're one of the most spectacular gardens in England. Followed by? Well, they went to Furley Estate. To Furley Estate. So, which Estate. is where the, uh, it's a great winery about five miles from here, and it's where also Montague Cuvée uh, is uh, produced as Separate well. Them out. Because we ensure, because we've got our winery just there, we ensure that all of our grapes are picked and back to the winery to be pressed within three hours. So they were there for a wonderful wine tasting then again. Uh, so that was the Monday and they came back for that big five course uh, welcome dinner that I was just um, talking about. Oh, uh. the food <laughs> was incredible. And as you know, it was the first time I've eaten um, duck, lamb, venison, sea bass, and whatever the name of the fish was that we had. Gurnard. Gurnard. Gurnard, yeah. Right? So and a lot of fun. all lot, absolutely. A lot of fun. Joe was an amazing chef. Yeah. Absolutely and amazing. Then Tuesday, they uh, left and went to another historic house nearby called Applehampton and Giles Keating gave them a private tour of the house. They had lunch with Giles, he's the owner of, of Applehampton, and they had a garden tour as well. Hold on, and, I'm just fixing my hair. <laughs> and Julie is just fixing her hair because she's passed a mirror. My hair, does it? Sorry, it's looking good. Does it need good. a bit of fixing? We're going to switch cameras soon. It's sort of okay, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. It, looking it, good. It definitely it's needs a cut. Mine. It definitely needs a cut, I would say. Anyway. Oh, we forgot to mention breakfast mm. every morning in the so dining room. Delicious breakfast. You could order from a whole English breakfast with sausages and my favorite mushrooms and tomatoes and eggs and people could have poached egg and coffee and all these wonderful things but anyway um that was breakfast every day and then on wednesday they went off to minton house where they met with lord digby who gave them a absolutely splendid lunch and a tour of the gardens and told lots of stories yes. about his ancestors scandalous stories scandalous I heard. stories about his ancestors and their involvement um in the United States, so lots that people can learn about yeah. um, the Digby family history. So after Minturn, everybody came back to Mapperton. One more thing though, I did yoga in the morning You on did Wednesday. yoga in the morning? That's right. I wasn't there. I did yoga here. There. So look out here everybody, and it was weather like this, blue sky, and we did yoga right out there. Sorry I don't have any footage of that, but um, lovely, we did a yin yoga practice and it was heavenly. And then the, they went the to the really, Well, the really good news is it was optional. Yes. So people like me who don't bend very well didn't have to do it. There were other things that you could have done, gone for a walk in the garden, whatever. After that, they came back to Mapperton and they met up with me and with our ranger, Ben, and we took them on a rewilding tour. Just like that, and they'll leave it. Huh. And then what they tend to do is they've gone and grazed here, and then they'll go and do the same in another patch. So we're hoping that these pigs have gone in, root will turn the soil over and they'll be taking it to different spots and then dispersal of all the seeds once they comes out the other end. So we basically went up to Coltley, which is the rewilding area, and we saw the pigs, we saw the ponies, we saw the cattle, and then I took groups down to the beaver enclosure. Um, and luckily enough, there was a ton of activity. We didn't see the beavers on that day, but there were so many trees that they'd recently been felling to create dams and wetlands and all those exciting things. So there was a ton to see. I loved uh, Athelhampton Gardens because yeah. I love gardens and it was spectacular. It doesn't disappoint, does it? This is it? not no. disappointing. Yeah, no. my, my favorite was trekking around uh, to see all the wilding. 
Yeah. Rewilding. Yeah, Bill, you wanted to do a bit of off-roading. I did. That was, I did. That I was, was very impressed you... by, the, uh, by the Land Rover's capability. <laughs> you, were, you were getting tempted by that. <laughs> so that was, that was Wednesday daytime. And then we move over to Julie for Wednesday evening. And, yeah. we, and we start to pan up to an important person on the wall That's at the right. top. And that is my great-grandmother, Alberta Sturgis. So as many of you know, if you've been watching Mapperton or even our sister channel, American Viscountess, I'm doing my master's in country house studies and my subject is Alberto and her collection, thousands of letters uh, that she left behind is now considered the largest American heiress collection in history. When everybody arrived to the coach house, I gave a presentation, uh, just a half hour presentation about my research so far into Alberta. Her mother's priority was marrying her into European aristocracy and even better if she could get her married into British aristocracy, which she did, but it took three seasons. And we have letters from Alberta not liking the seasons, not liking the social scenes um, and really struggling with it. How did I do, Luke? You were fabulous. You uh, gave a great talk about Alberta and I learned all sorts of things about her and my American ancestors who I'm incredibly proud of. You and, do learn um, a lot. We recently found her recipe book with over 100 recipes and so Chef Joe and I uh, decided to recreate uh, some of her recipes and we, I hosted a three course meal in the coach house that, were, that used three of her absolutely delicious recipes. Tomato farsis, yes, with a reduced balsamic, uh, and they're going to be lovely as a starter. And then we're going to do duck breast with a, a cherry sauce, so which is bubbling away frantically yes, there. Yes, Wow, it's going to heat up my camera. Great. Uh, fine. <laughs> Sorry. Great. And this is the salsify, which will be ready by dinner time. And what is the salsify? Remind me in her it's recipe a book. It's a root vegetable, and we're trying to follow the recipe as much as we can. Well done. Uh, so it's boiling with the butter and the water at the moment, and then apparently I do it with some white wine and cream, and it's going to be lovely. It's going to be lovely. It's okay, going to be lovely. great. Uh, and then, and then you're going to have this fruit thing, which is in. Uh, the, sorry about that. We're that's all right. We're talk. cooking. It's busy in here. I gotta and go. And then you're gonna have a, this uh, Macedonian iced cup thing, which is, <laughs> um, which I don't really know what it is, but it's gonna be lovely. It's gonna be lovely. It's yeah, all on the recipe the card. Almond, almond liqueur over it, and it's gonna wake you all up. Great. And then you're gonna have a chocolate mousse. <gasps> I'm so all of these are in Alberta's recipe book and indeed, wait till you see indeed. how we've set the table everybody I'm gonna leave them to cook and also I've got to give my presentation on Alberta right now beautiful beautiful menu cards absolutely beautiful menu cards always a vegetarian option so um, so and then people after the dinner a few people did decide to go back with Ben for a nighttime walk and it was in, pouring with rain, rain but they saw the beavers they did see the beavers they well, went beaver, down yeah and, um, and they saw them through the night vision. So yes. it was so exciting because it was dark, it was pouring with rain, but there one of the beavers was yes. munching away in the night vision. So then Thursday, it's the last full day at Mapperton of the tour, and we got them to do something that everybody who visits Dorset has to do, and that is go on a fossil hunt. So we live here um, quite close to what's known as the Jurassic Coast, which is the very dramatic coastline that we have in West Dorset. And there are fossils galore. So they went mm. off to Sea Town, and I think they found oh, yeah. quite a few fossils. One of the guests came back with an entire bag full of fossils. I was, was really worried, worried about- Was worried about the weight. The weight on the way back. And then they probably had to buy a whole extra yeah. piece of luggage to do that. Um, but after that, they then went to the amazing seaside town of Lyme Regis, and Lyme Regis is the home of Mary Anning. Mary Anning was the Victorian paleontologist who discovered this enormous dinosaur in the cliffs. So they got to see uh, Lyme Regis and to go to some of the amazing gift shops and fossil shops. And, and the variety is what's so fantastic because you're yeah. seeing manor houses, you're seeing Tudor homes, you're seeing I don't know 19th century home I guess you would say as well as uh, the fossil beach. Yeah. You know, which did was, you find a fossil? Yes, yeah. I, I was one of the A students actually. It was fantastic. <laughs> it's it's just it's so cool. Absolutely, yeah. um, everything. It's and the rewilding. You know, I live in the city of Boston. Yeah. How often do I get to pet a pig? 
yeah. you know, and, and they're like friendly and happy and the cows and the horses. Oh. And yeah, it was oh. wonderful. And then after that incredible day in Lyme Regis, they were back here. Here and actually here. And, and we are in the library and the library mm. became a concert hall. It certainly did. Because we had the amazing Giles Adams, and who is an extraordinary singer and player. I'm not even going to try to recreate no, anything that he don't. does. That would be a disaster. Would be. Um, but he was singing Gilbert and Sullivan. He was singing Flanders and Swan. Lots all songs, British. British songs that I've grown up with. Some of the Americans knew the songs too. The hippopotamus was no ignoramus <laughs> and sang her this sweet serenade. After that, we would then went through to the drawing room for drinks. Yes. And we had some wonderful drinks by the fire. Here we are in the drawing room. Fire is blazing. Drinks recital has just finished. There's the fire. Oh, there you can see it. And we are all here having our farewell drinks before dinner. And it's wonderful. Uh, in the drawing room, and one thing I've noticed about Americans, um, oh, which, so is, which is a wonderful thing, is that um, everybody sits, so you don't need to have everybody standing, which gets a bit exhausting. So we yeah. were all just sort of sitting by the fire um, and it glass, was in, lovely. glass in hand, Mappet and Kube. I'll sit too. Etc. You're going to sit on the other side. Yeah, so I can Try film have you. A little, have a oh gosh, call, this is, we? and these we had these enormous embroidered chairs, which come from Hinchingbrook the original family ancestral seat. It was really sweet to see two people sitting in them. Because they're of course, designed for one. They're designed for one when you would wear your big sort of petticoats and... For ladies. For going, ladies. Going to the withdrawing room, which of yes. course is, is what this is. So we had lovely drinks in here. Gosh, that was so fun. And then we went through to dinner back into the dining room for our last farewell dinner. Well, that is last is farewell. Now this one, <laughs> people didn't have to put a bow tie on. But most of us wore a tie or a smart dress, and it was a wonderful evening. Three courses. The main course, I think, was British, well, Dorset beef. Yeah. Lovely fillet of beef. And I had a vegetarian Wellington, and it was delicious. And it was sad on Friday when everybody left. It was, it was quite sad, wasn't it? It, it was, was just... but there was one thing that was quite well-timed, and that was the weather, because we had amazing weather for the first three we days. We certainly did. And then on the final day, the heavens opened, and it was a complete rainstorm. So yes. back to traditional British weather, I think people at that stage I mean, it were, also... were already, they were already dreaming <laughs> of Midwestern sun. We, but we must mention really quickly that actually for the first time ever, we had everybody tell us one morning, we were a bit too hot. <laughs> I've spent years <laughs> trying to sort the plumbing out in this house. And we did um, put in a whole new system. Um, we put in a biomass boiler and the house was heated. And I always had in my head that at some point we'd have a group of Americans who would come here and be too cold. But the opposite was true. So I had to switch the whole heating off. Yeah, which it, was, I was delighted it was great. It was great. Anyway, it was, I have to say, I'm still smiling behind the camera. I yeah, mean, let me, let me Luke, show Julie it, smiling. Julie, what would our, our last words would be something about um, what new friends we, we made, did. how lucky we were yep. with the group that came. Um, Every and, night after dinner, we were in that hall just having drinks by the fire, laughing, telling stories. I mean, we did literally walk away with 12 new American friends and it was so special, I, I think for me in particular, because I've been over in this country for two decades now and in this house and surrounded by wonderful British accents and British people, but to have a house filled with American accents and Americans, and some of them would say to me, oh my gosh, Julie, you're American, because I know I've got a little bit of a twang, 
um, they would say, you're sounding back to being American again, back to being American. I was like, yes. <laughs> so it was, oh, it was for me almost, I mean, I can go as far as saying almost like a dream come true. I don't think you and I, you know, when we first embarked on sort of taking over uh, running Matt Britton, we ever thought that this would be possible. And, and then, it, you know, you married an American wife and we thought, why don't we try this? And we've done it. And it was a huge success and, and I we, can't wait to do it again. And, and we really hope to make new friends. So if you'd like to find out more about Grand Historic Tours, please go to the website. It's grandhistorictours.com. We put it in the description and we really hope to welcome you here someday as well. Thank you, everybody. Do comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And any comments do or any questions, let us know. We're very active on YouTube, as you know. So we love hearing from each and every one of you. Bye, everybody. It's been amazing. Every aspect of it, every the attention to detail that the staff and you and Julie have has just been, it's been incredible. It's been the trip of a lifetime for it us. Was. We were just talking about that this morning. So I, there's not enough words to describe it, that it is, it is magical. It's the only thing I can think of. The experience, I should say, was incredible. From meals to conversations, to stories, to gardens, to the rewilding project, it was fabulous.